All right, good evening. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, uh, and I would like to call this regular scheduled meeting with the Brookhaven Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Uh, I'll not call the roll, and I'll note for the record that all board members are present at the time. Uh, I'd like to uh, read our Zoning Board of Appeals Chairman's preamble before every meeting, just so everyone in attendance understands. Uh, Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Right. You gotta get right on it, but you have to get right on to the microphone. All right, can you hear me now? <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is the preamble of the Zoning Board of Appeals, just to let everyone in attendance know um, what our duties are as the Zoning Board, so you understand uh, how the process works. Um, but the Zoning Board of Appeals is charged with the responsibility of granting variances and ordinance requirements after determining whether there exists an undue hardship upon an applicant if a variance is not granted. In determining whether or not to grant a variance, the board shall apply the criteria specified in section 27-916 of the zoning ordinance to the facts of each case. The board further hears applications where it is alleged that an administrative official erred in a final order, requirement, or decision based on or made in the enforcement of the zoning ordinance. The Zoning Board of Appeals does not create zoning, nor can it change zoning. The board has no authority to grant variances for use, density, or height. Matters brought before the Zoning Board of Appeals are to be concerned only with the variances from development standards placed on property by the zoning ordinance. <coughs> Final decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals may be appealed by petitioning the Superior Court of DeKalb County within 30 days after the decision is written. All right, so our first, uh, our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, and we have two sets of minutes to approve tonight. Uh, the first ones are from our special called meeting on March 4th, 2013. Did That's the one with the correction? Yes. Can we just discuss any corrections we see with you on these minutes? Or, or amongst yourself. Okay. Uh, on the minutes from the specially called meeting, uh, our, our first meeting we had, on the last page of the minutes, I noticed two errors on there. Um, about halfway down the page, it says, Don Woodley explained why he was in favor it was a straightforward request. They just want a shorter building. And that was actually Don Bolia that stated that. And then a little bit further down that same page, uh, as to the vote, uh, the motion to deny, it says the motion to deny passed unanimously. And it actually, the motion to deny passed four to two. Uh, Mr. Beardsley was recused from that vote and uh, Don Bolia and myself voted against the motion to deny the variance. The other four board members voted to deny the variance. Does anyone else have any comments on the minutes from the uh, March 4th meeting? All right. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any comments on the meeting uh, minutes from the March 4th meeting? No? Do we need to vote these in? I move we okay. adopt them as amended or approve them as amended. I second. All right. Uh, the motion is to adopt the minutes as amended. Uh, all those in favor, uh, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the minutes from the first meeting are approved. Um, now we need to adopt the minutes from the March 20th uh, regular meeting, 2013. Any discussion or comments on those minutes? All right, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. And a second? I second. All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the regular March 
20th meeting signified by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Do we have any organizational or procedural items this evening? Mr. Beardsley? I guess, yeah, I guess you would call it procedural. Uh, I am going to recuse myself on the last four items, the applications 48 through, well, let's see, 48, 49, 4A and 4B, items 8 through 10, uh, 11 on the agenda. I've been legal counsel at Epps Heritage Investments for seven or eight years, so I must step out on that one. Okay. So, any other organizational or procedural items? Any unfinished business? All right. So we'll move forward into new business. We'll uh, start with our first case of the evening which is uh, ZBA 13-041, Ted Sandler of the Ted Sandler Law Group, located at 6400 Powers Ferry Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339, is representing Wilkinson Continental LLC, the owner of the subject property, 1322 and 1355 Briarwood Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30319, for the following. A variance to 27 dash 356B1B to reduce a side yard setback from 50 feet to 27 feet and a variance to 27-358 to reduce a transitional buffer between dissimilar districts from 50 feet to 27 feet. Um, can we get uh, the uh, staff to give the board a summary of the staff memo included in our packets? Chair, um, the, the request, as you stated, is to reduce a side yard setback and a transitional buffer to permit the apartment complex located at 1322 Briarwood Road to transfer land from their own property to an, uh, an adjacent neighbor that uh, fronts on Telford Drive. Uh, you can read the, the staff report that we put together. The, uh, and for the reason and the nature of why they need the variance, but what this will end up doing is allowing a transfer of property and move the property line for the Telford Drive property and the apartment complex. Um, our recommendation is that you view the application favorably, and further, we would uh, appreciate if approved that you were to approve it um, with the staff conditions that we placed uh, uh, at the end of the staff memo. Okay. Since this is a public hearing, I will now open the public hearing portion and open a 10 minute period for when? I'm sorry. Uh, we need to uh, have Mr. Sandler please uh, come up and speak. We got a telephone call today that um, Mr. Sandler actually had a family emergency. He would not be able to attend. He has sent someone in his stead. Yes, I'm okay. Clinton Cole with Harp and Simons. Okay. And we represent Wilkinson as well. And Ted is actually in our building. Can you pull that up the stand? Go ahead and talk into that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I, I apologize. I'm prepared, but um, I, I didn't see this property until earlier this week uh, either. But I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, and the only thing I added that I would note is uh, Telford Drive is a, a dead end, and the, the shaded area is approximately the area that's going to be. Uh, to uh, Ms. Wilma Roberts, who's the adjacent owner. Um, the fence that is there has been there since the 70s, so apparently this has been uh, a matter of confusion for a long time. It wasn't my client bought it, realized it, then to sell it became a, a title issue. So that's the primary reason to do this. So uh, we can settle uh, any claims with uh, Ms. Roberts. And I believe uh, Ms. Roberts provided a letter, which I hope Okay. 
Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak in uh, in favor of the variance in attendance? All right. Is there anyone who would uh, who is opposed to the variance that would like to speak? Okay. Please please come forward. Uh, on this particular case, I'm looking for Yes, I, I just want to deny the conditions. They suggested that staff had put some conditions on their recommendations. Not that just as a member of the public, I want to deny those conditions. Certainly. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Mayor. Um, the first condition reads approval of the setback buffer yard variance as requested and solely adjacent to Lot 1 within Briarwood Hill Subdivision, Block C, as shown on the survey entitled Wilkinson Real Estate LLC and Chicago Title Insurance Company dated January 27, 2012. Second condition reads, a subdivision plat should be submitted to the city for recording in DeKalb County records so that the new parcel boundaries are correctly identified and associated with respective tax parcel identification numbers. <coughs> Okay. Did that respond? Thank you. Sure. All right. Ma'am, would you like to step forward, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, please, please state your name. I'm sorry, I forgot to ask the gentleman there. I'm Angela Lagergott, and I'm one of the um, property owners on Barnwood Hills. Mine is number 10. It's not shown on that one, but it's shown on the next, uh, either the prior or the next. Uh, Slide. And my question is, I have a clarification question. I'm wondering if if these um, reductions are approved, if they will apply to all four sides or just that one side of, of the property. I'm on the east side of that property and I'm number 10. And I wasn't able to tell from the, the picture whether those dotted lines are the where they are now or where the proposed boundary is. But if it just, it, my thought is, if this only applies to that one disputed property, I have no problem. But if all if it would open up the potential for all of the surrounding right. areas to be reduced, for me and my neighbors, right. that would be a problem. And one is already having issues trying to resell this property with the lines. Okay. And it, it is, if you could just please. Uh, yeah, that, that please first condition read that the, the, if, if approved, and this approval is relevant to the variance as requested and solely adjacent to lot one within Briarwood Hill subdivision block C. So, so that's nothing to do with the The only area. setback that's allowable is the one that's right next to the, 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 the last lot on the left, the, the, most, the westernmost lot <coughs> on the north side of Telford Drive. So it wouldn't set a precedent for Correct. Okay. Howard, should we point out um, what we discussed earlier, the diagonal line in the corner that is not the entire shaded area now? Correct. As it's been described to us, the, the, the transfer of land does not incorporate everything that's inside of that shaded area. Instead, it, in, it incorporates the land, the, the line that's uh, punctuated with the X's on that survey represents a fence. And it's our understanding that it's the land that's inside it, that fence that moves towards the east. Okay. But essentially, that fence line will become the new property line. Yeah, can the applicant confirm that, please? Yes, that is, that is the case. Okay, thank you. All right, is there anyone else who would like to speak against the variance? We will now close the, uh, the public hearing portion of the meeting and uh, go into board discussion on the topic. Just have something to read in the record. Okay, go ahead. Um, as the, the applicant stated, there was a letter that was sent to us, uh, <coughs> sent to staff um, in support, and it, and it reads, it's from uh, Cannon, I guess, My Hill and Winkles, LLC. Uh, it, it's addressed to, to me, Mr. Kimson. It reads, please be advised that this law firm represents Ms. Wilma Roberts, the owner of the property located at 1332 Telford Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30319. Ms. Roberts' property is immediately adjacent to the subject property, and the variances requested are for that portion of the Wilkinson property that abuts Ms. Roberts' property. 
We have discussed this variance request at length with the applicant and support the city approving the variances as requested. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me directly. And it's signed, William E. Cannon III. Okay, thank you. All right, well, uh, I'll welcome any board comments or a motion. I move we approve the variances with the two conditions that staff had recommended. I second. All right, so the motion is the chair understands it is to approve uh, item number ZBA 13-041 with the conditions, uh, the recommendations by staff, uh, both recommendations number one and two. All right, so all those in uh, in favor of the approval of the variance signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the, motion, the variance passes unanimously. All right, item number two, which is ZBA 13-042, Sean Cash of 4510 Wyuka Road, Atlanta, Georgia 30342, seeks the following, a variance to 27-788A to reduce an average front yard setback from 71.8 feet to 45 feet at a property located at 4142 Shawnee Lane. 35 feet, excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so uh, if we could get the staff opinion on the uh, variance. Uh, yeah, the request is to reduce a, a front yard setback for construction uh, of a new home at 4142 Shawnee Lane. There's a requirement in the city of Brookhaven that when a home is built on a block that is developed with 60% or more of the lots on the block in existence, that the setbacks for the neighboring homes, the average of the setbacks in the neighboring homes within 75 feet of the side lot lines of the subject property become the front yard setback for the property in question. In this instance, the average of those neighboring properties comes out to 71.8 feet. In this instance, uh, Mr. Cash, the applicant, wishes to demolish the existing home and build a new home in its stead. We would like to pull the front of that home forward to a point that um, I believe you stated 35 feet, and there have been some discrepancies, but the application is actually for 45 feet. The district standard in R100 is for 35 feet, but the applicant seeks uh, to be able to place that home within, within 45 feet of the front yard property line. So staff recommends that you view the application favorably, and further, if approved, would uh, recommend that you approve such with the conditions that staff has <coughs> printed at the end of the staff report. And I can read those if you'd like them to. Please Development please. of the lot shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department attached to this application, prepared by Gaddy Surveying and Design and dated February 19th, 2013. Number two is the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home depicted in the attached development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to any and all future construction on the property. So the agenda is incorrect and it's 45 feet. So That's correct. Tim was actually right when he... <laughs> okay. All right, I'll now open the public hearing portion and a 10 minute period uh, for comments in favor of the application. Mr. Cash? Okay. Please go ahead. My name is Sean Cash, I'm the applicant. <coughs> You're going to have to hold the microphone. Pretty much put it in your mouth for people to be able to hear you. Just don't ask me to say. No. As Mr. Cohen said, um, we, we are asking for um, a reduction of a 71.8 foot uh, front yard setback to 45 feet, not 35 feet, due to the there, well, there are many reasons. It would create such a, a small buildable area um, within the property. Also, uh, the topography, I believe, on the east side, sloping down towards the rear of the lot, um, is making us push, push it forward towards the, the thinner portion of the property. Um, 
also the, the curb in the street pushes back the buildable area um, closer. It, it makes it thinner towards the center. There are many similar homes to what we're proposing in the area, and we believe that um, this would not cause any hardship to the neighbors, um, not constitute a special privilege, or be inconsistent with limitations of other properties within the zoning district, in our opinion. Um, we also believe that this request is consistent with the intent and purpose of the city of Brookhaven comprehensive plan, and will protect against um, blight and depreciation in the area. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? I'm Caddick with Caddick Survey and Design. We did the site planning for this particular piece of property. I'd just like to add that the size of this house is in conformance with the other characters of the houses surrounding this area. This is the minimum amount of front yard reduction to be able to put that house on. You'll notice the garage is very close to the rear setback. If I had to tilt the house further, to get it away from the street, uh, the house would not be perpendicular to Shawnee Lane. The, the house would not be perpendicular to Shawnee Lane and would not make the same conclusion. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? All right. I'll now open a 10 minute period for anyone who would like to, uh, who is opposed to the application. <coughs> My name is Bob Crochet. I'm speaking on behalf of the family. I want to read you a letter from Larry Beckwith, who is the owner of that small house at the very bottom of the picture. That's basically being squeezed back in a way visually because of this large, massive uh, structure that they built next door. He writes this letter and he gives it to me because he's in Nevada right now on business. There's no way he could get here in time for this meeting. This email will serve as my signature against the variance, as I am out of town until after the meeting. I am completely opposed to this variance, as it will greatly diminish the value of our property now at the future market values. This variance should be denied. The requested changes will severely impact the quality of the view from our front porch and the carport, our street appeal view to our property, and the views of, of others from the surrounding subdivision. They will adversely affect the future overall development of the subdivision as other property owners will seek similar requests that will also diminish. Residential property development should not be granted variances of this magnitude to restrictions that have been long established that maintain the values of each of the lots based on these original restrictions. These restrictions have been part of this neighborhood since it was established in 1954. We have lived by them, our neighbors have lived by them. The builder should not have and would not have known this information prior to purchasing this lot. We respectfully request, and he's talking about him on behalf of his wife, that this variance be denied and the builder develop property with a dwelling that conforms and meets these restrictions. Summarily, he's, a, he's saying that he wants to enforce the law as it stands. His neighborhood does not need 45 foot setbacks. Now, the setback request here is not minimal. It's a 78.1 foot existing setback. He's looking for 45 feet. That's a substantial reduction. It's a reduction of 26.8 feet. It's a 37% decrease. That house was substantially moved towards the road. You cannot see it from that drawing right there, but the side plane of the house, which faces the property that these good folks live in, is nothing but a tall three-story blank wall. The ridge line of that house is about 35 feet in the air. It's two, and eight, it's two stories uh, of, of living space. It's got a downstairs uh, uh, basement, which is addition to the square foot stated. It also has an attic, which is extremely high. All right. What it does is it prominently overwhelms the neighboring property. It aesthetically displaces the neighboring property by shoving it to the rear visually. It severely restricts the quiet enjoyment of the people who live there now. Teresa, her husband, and of course, father-in-law. All of these revival factors, which are considered by any potential buyer down the line who would want to purchase their property. Now here's the thing. We have a developer who's coming in, and he's obviously going to make money off this house. He's going to do it, 
And we don't have any problems with anybody making money in this world. This is America. You can capitalize and you can make a profit. I'm all for it. But in terms of this situation, he not only will make a profit, these people will lose severely. I can, I can assure you the little house they live in is 2,200 square feet. They've lived there for over 25 years. This gentleman's coming in. He's new to the neighborhood. He has no concept of what he's doing here in terms of how he's going to affect their property. I back up these people because I'm a personal friend of theirs and have known them for years. Larry Beckwith is a very close personal friend of mine. He asked me, called me, begged me to be here tonight on his behalf. So I'm here. I can promise you that his point is exact. The building setback lines in the neighborhood should be maintained as they are, or that particular structure either needs to be redesigned or reduced severely or moved back in that property. That's the same I'll have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. My name is Teresa Hotard Beckwith, and um, I'm a small house. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Next to it. Um, I'm not very good at drawing, but I do some dimensions. Um, there have been, on our street near our house, three other large homes. They were wonderfully built. They were built by John Willis. He took into consideration all the smaller houses by us. All the fronts of the houses meet, even the big ones to the small ones. So there's no um, division. It's the same. It looks like the same neighborhood. The house that this man wants to build, he wants to bring it forward, unlike all the other houses. I know the build that the guy is going to be building it did help with the other two houses for John Willis. He knows. He's seen this street. What I have here, it, it show, it'll show you the fronts of all the houses. They all match, except for two houses where the garages come out. The red houses are the new John Willis homes. They look wonderful on our street. We're not objecting to new homes on our street. We're objecting to someone coming into our street, into our neighborhood, taking a variance, and bring it forward. It doesn't go, it doesn't conform to the other homes that John Willis made. I don't know who this Mr. Acock is, but it's a different design. They do not have to put a design like this. You said in the beginning of your speech that is a hardship for the person asking for the variance. Well, it is a hardship for me. It's a hardship for our family. This is a, I, I am the first resident of this neighborhood in 1954. This is my father. He's 96 years old. He owns the first house. I moved there 20 plus years ago when I got married. And we bought this property knowing it was a great property. And you're, asked, you're allowing this person or this company to bring that site forward. It, it diminishes the value of our property. It's going to diminish just everything for us. And it will look like we're going to live in a cave. And there's no reason. John, let me tell you one other thing about John Willis. When they built the property to our left, his name was John Z, was the builder. He bought me three plans, and he said to me, which of these plans would you like us to build on this property, and why? And I gave my opinions. He said, I can't promise you I will build that house, but I, at least I will think about it. He went away and had three plans to show us. This builder has one plan, and I know there are more. He does not have to build that property or that house on that property. It's amazing. You ought to, if you could see the street and the beautiful homes that are there, I'm not saying you cannot build one, but they do not have to build this house in that position and that close to the street. It does not conform to the rest of the street. That's all I have to say. Now, my name is Teresa who played that one. Ms. Beckman, just the diagram that you have, is your home the one? This is this is my home. Okay. Okay. And That's every, my thought. Every front of their house, even the tall ones, the red ones are John Wilson's. They all conform all the way across, except these two garages which they made match. This is the house going to be built. He wants to bring it towards this position, I guess, where the garages are.
this is the house they want to build. I don't think it's very well. This is our house. But John was put in consideration. He put the properties there. He would, they all match. The front of our home all match. All the way down. This one, all the way down. These two, the property they're saying is not that big. They put two pools in. There is a backyard. You don't have to have a pool. It's a great property to have. It's not, it's not bad at all. And I, and we're right there. So you're going to <coughs> so, you say the hardship would be a hardship for us. And they know when the builders come to the neighborhood, they know all the setbacks, they know all the rules, and they still buy the property. They know when they can put on that property and they try to stretch it. They don't buy the property. They bought it for $180,000, which is that for the great price. Most houses in one bucket, two hundred dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are we going to come up? Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to the variance? Okay. Go ahead, sir. We've got a little bit of time. Uh, my name is Rod Ness. I'm also a good little go three house in the neighborhood and I split when I live on it. I paid ten ten one thousand dollars for my lot. I paid ten thousand dollars for my lot and I put it for down and I respect the setbacks. And I'm a developer too. And I think I like the neighborhood and I wouldn't even think about it asking you to if I build a house to ask you to move it three five feet. It's way too much. It's way too much. I'm a developer, I'm still a resident, so I don't think it's fair, so all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, did we have a balance of the time for the application that Mr. Cash, if you cared to rebut any of the comments? Okay. Mr. Cash, if there's anything you'd like to say towards those comments? I appreciate everyone's comments. Um, took me by surprise, obviously. Um, we, of course, would love to work with the neighbors and to try to keep everybody happy. If you look at the, uh, the current house, that uh, bright orange part is the buildable area that we have right now. If you see that on the lot. I mean, it's... Can you step forward, please? Yes. That's, that's the existing house right now, which is currently encroaching into the buildable area. The orange, that's in the um, green yellow. Um, the orange part is our buildable area. And as you can see, this the house that she lives in is only 60 feet from the, from the uh, right away. Every house is ahead of the 71 point feet. Well, this one's 80. That, that's why the average is out to be what it, what it is. Um, and then with the topography in the back, so we tried to move this way, we actually moved further away from her house. Um, let me get to You can put down the mic when you're this close to us okay. if you need to, man. And here, you know, in regular R100 zoning, the setback would be uh, 35 feet. So not only are we 10 feet beyond that, but this is just an unheated area. That's a porch, so that's probably like another 5, 10 feet right there. I'm not sure exactly. I'm just trying to figure out where on this lot we can put this with the curve of the um, street and try to pull away from their house because it does drop off in the back. I do have photos of that on, the, on another board. Um, you know, on the other side of their house is a similar house what, to what we're trying to build. I do understand you don't want to be surrounded by these other houses, but in the neighborhood, the older ranch-style houses, you know, they're going to be one story, the newer houses. The uh, city of Brookhaven, of course, is a more, you know, it's a very desirable area to live in, and people want to park their houses, they want to store their houses. You know, there's real improved basement, depending on the topography of the property, 
just stay this way, which it will make it look taller towards their house. But as I said, we're going to try and move further away from the house this way. We did try to contact them. Um, John Gallinero, we did have copies. I believe we left off some uh, sex work plans that we never heard back. We do have sign offs from a neighbor right here. We have a neighbor on the side, we have a neighbor in the rear. The only ones we don't have is for the backwards. And there was another one over here, which was another couple's, and they didn't, what was it? I apologize. Um, you all smell gas, there's a gas leak by safety markers in Piedmont. So if you all gas, you all smell gas, that's where the gas leak is, so please don't be alarmed. You know, just be, I apologize for the truth. Thank, thank you for letting us know. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, other than that, I mean, that's that's where we are right now. Um, we love to work with the Can neighbors. we see the first drawing, please? You were saying the orange is the buildable area that's right. if they follow the current setback. Right. And, then I and that's further the, back than the, the opponents. Um, the opposition get folks this. are on which side? They are. The opposition is south. <coughs> No, I believe right, it's right the one right next door. Yeah, they're, they're 60 feet from the right away. And then we got 83 on this side, which makes us at 71.8. Instead of, you know, normal 35, but we have an R100. That's the current house, which is exceeded. And here's the, uh, here's the proposed. Um, so, okay. we'll, we'll be moving. I, I can figure out exactly how to explain you. that to these folks over here. I mean. It looks like the current setback would require this lot to be a house to be built even further back from the street than there. Um, well, we would be 45 feet if you include the unheated porch. Uh, there's 60.7 feet, and that that's from the right of way, not the actual street. Um, so if you look at it the way it curves, we kind of let's look at this one. There's, Here's their house, and, and with the curve, we kind of match up with it. And then they'd be set back further to the house on this side, you know, which would be, we'd be jetting forward in front of the 83 feet away from the right way. You know, we kind of could, and we kind of be even with them. You know, I don't think that we, I, I believe we wouldn't be, you know, jetting out forward, causing them to live in a cave. Mr. Pash, are you going to be the resident of the home? Okay. Uh, sure. Sure. All right. I will uh, go ahead and uh, close the public hearing related to this item and welcome any board comments or a motion on the item. I have a question, uh, Tamar Howard. Um, in a situation like this, where we're talking about the average setbacks for a development or a neighborhood that's over sixty percent developed, we go with the average. What takes precedence, the average or the code? That, that is the code. Well, you mean the district standard or the average standard? Right. It's the, the average. So, okay. If the average is more restrictive than the average controls, if the district is more restrictive than the district controls. Is it the average of just the two houses on either side? It's the average of any structure within 75 feet of the side lot lines. So essentially in this district, yes, it's just the houses on either side of it, on the same street. Okay. My, my general impression is two, twofold. Number one, uh, the, the buildable area that he described, that he showed in orange, does seem overly restrictive to me. Uh, so this lot is being pressed on the front by the curve being pressed on the back by that inset angle. So there is a bit of a lot hardship, it seems to me now. Uh, I'd also parent that the property owner and the neighbor have not talked, have not met, not tried to work out some sort of compromise. Um, so I'm not making a motion yet, but I'd be inclined to defer this a month 
give them a chance to try to make some kind of compromise. I agree with Mr. Beersley. I'd like to see some more involvement with the neighbor to see if they can come up with some options that might be more agreeable. Okay. Um, my, my comments on the, uh, the parcel are, uh, I, I, I too would like to see some, uh, maybe some dialogue between the adjacent owners and the property owner. Um, with the, I guess with the understanding of the adjacent property owners that um, this is this is what we're tasked to do is to you know grant variances based on exceptional conditions um, and I understand that you can purchase a lot you can look at it in advance my, my opinion is kind of along the lines of Mr. Beardsley's though is there are some exceptional circumstances with this law um, with it being in a curve in the road like that and having the center pin which pinches down that rear line as well um, there, there's not, in my opinion, enough buildable area on the lot within the 71 foot setback. Um, so, you know, would, would it, either party be opposed to a deferral for 30 days to, to discuss that with each other or? Particularly since the owners of the, you know, your husband is out of town. Mr. Yeah, we, we could defer for 30 days. We'd rather have it. We can do that. We don't mind going back in that room and discussing right now to see if we can get the police closer. Do we need a, do we need a moderator back there? Okay. I, I, I don't have a problem with that, actually. There's a table back there. You can't close the door, yeah. All right. Can you be happy. back in here. Can right. we table this item uh, to be brought up again later in the agenda? Does that be okay with you, Mr. Chair? Absolutely. Uh, we'll put you on the back. Would somebody like to motion to, to table this? I'll move that we table this item till the end of the meeting. And uh, well, actually, I would I would like to put them on uh, after 46 and before How about 47. After 47. After 46. After 47. Right. Right. So okay. Before 48. That's my motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. All right. The next item on the agenda is ZBA case number 13-043, Frank Gaddy of Gaddy Surveying and Design, located at 1215 Pleasant Hill Road, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 30044, representing the Patels. Owners seek the following, a variance to 27-189 to increase the maximum allowable lot coverage of an R75 lot from 35% to 47% at a property located at 1103 Mendel Circle. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the public comment. Mr. Gaddy, if you'd like to start. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Staff report. Staff report. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip that. Uh, this request is to allow an increase in uh, maximum allowable lot coverage, otherwise known as impervious surface, from the district maximum of 35% to a requested 47% for a home that's already been constructed on Mendel Circle in, uh, on a block that consists of homes which are largely also non-conforming for their amount of impervious surface that's allowable or that has been constructed on the lot. Um, the staff report talks about the technical issues involved, but Ultimately, um, the staff has found the application should be viewed favorably and further would uh, suggest that if it were to be approved by the board this evening, that it be approved with the uh, staff conditions of, um, number one, the project be completed in substantial compliance with the submitted site plan documents dated February 26, 2013, prepared by Gaddy Surveying and Design. Um, additionally, appropriate stormwater mitigation measures should be installed uh, excuse me, will be installed consistent with the improvements indicated on the supplied site plan. Okay. And with your second recommendation there, are you suggesting that uh, those would be inspected by DeKalb County still, or would you want uh, the City of Brookhaven to inspect those stormwater measures? No, I think the City of Dunwoody needs to go out there and make sure that they've been City installed. City of Brookhaven? Uh, yes. Right, the city of Brookhaven needs to go. It's your old job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> old habits. Um, 
four years, four weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's important that, uh, okay. that, that the city of Brookhaven actually go out there and make sure that they've been installed for the, for the reasons which are delineated in the staff report. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and open up the public comment. Uh, Mr. Gaddy, if you'd like to do it. My name is Frank Gaddy with Gaddy Surveying Design and Design and Surveying a Piece of Property. Uh, a building permit was issued for this lot in October 2012 out of Cave County. The project's located in the Linwood Park Blanket Variance Area, which was issued by the old Cave County Board of Adjustments in June 1967. The Board of Adjustments recognized the need to reduce distances between buildings and the front yard setback due to the substandard lot sizes that existed in the neighborhood. Lot coverage was not a code requirement at that time of the issuance of the blank experience. Of the 21 lots in the immediate area, three are vacant and 14 are currently non-conforming with respect to lot coverage. The lots vary in lot coverage with the maximum lot coverage up to 50%, 52%. Therefore, we felt like an increase from 35 to 47 is in character with the surrounding homes. I have designed the water quality for all the appropriate services on this lot and part of the DeKalb County requirements is that I certify that to the county and then we do not get our certificate of occupancy uh, through them without that sign off and inspection. I have no problem calling the uh, city of Brookhaven inspector and let them know. Uh, but this process, this particular lot, because the permit was issued in the cab, uh, CO will be issued through the cab. I'll have to modify the site plan to show the increased impervious area and uh, water quality. Uh, we'll have to increase, we'll have to revise the site plan to show what y'all see uh, and before we get our certificate of occupancy and we'll also have to provide proof to the Kent County that a variance was issued. Um, but we have designed water quality for all appropriate services on the lot. The site, the site plan submitted to DeKalb County was in compliance with lot coverage. However, it's not our client's preference to install a gravel driveway. If the variance is denied, we'll be enforced to install a gravel concrete driveway apron at the street and a small concrete pad in front of the garage and connect those two surfaces with a gravel driveway. If you have any questions, please my, do my best to uh, answer them for you. Okay. Does anyone else uh, would like to speak in favor of the application? All right. Uh, we'll now have 10 minutes for anyone who is opposed to the application that would like to speak. All right. Seeing as how we have none, I will go ahead and close the public portion of the meeting and open it up to the board for discussion or a motion. Mr. Gaddy, what are the flow wells shown on the plot? It's an infiltration well. They, it's a high-density polyethylene container that's in the middle that's perforated. We surround that with eight foot of gravel, two foot of gravel underneath it, so it will catch the bottom of that area between the inside of the container and the voids between the rock will contain the first 1.2 inches of rain uh, from the impervious surfaces. So it's a runoff mitigation device? Right, it allows that first 1.2 inches of rain to be <coughs> infiltrated into the ground to improve the water, to improve the runoff. And the downspouts from the roof are directed to that as well? Yes, sir. And I've overcompensated to cover the uh, driveway by increasing the volume to the ponds by catching the river and putting those into it. So we've got a little bit more than 1.2 that we catch from the house. I wanted to remind fellow members of the board that this is the one where the uh, house proposed or actually partially built in this house is very consistent in keeping with the size and dimensions of the other houses in the area for which they supplied a lot of pictures. Okay. Anyone else have any comments or discussion? I make a motion for due pass. Okay. I second. All right. So the motion, as the chair understands it, is to let me get the number to approve the variance for item ZBA 13-043 to uh, grant the variance. All those in with the with the conditions specified by Mr. Kuntz. With the uh, conditions specified by Mr. Kuntz in the staff report, with the amendment that the city of Brookhaven 
uh, community development department be notified uh, once the system is installed uh, so they can inspect it before it's covered. Um, all right, so all those in favor of the motion signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes unanimously. All right, ZBA 13-044, Kirk and Danielle Sonnefeld. Owners seek the following, a variance to 27-206E to decrease the minimum required rear yard of an R60 lot from 40 feet to 30.75 feet at their property located at 2279 Kusawadi Drive. Uh, can we get a staff report on that? This is a rear yard variance request that will uh, facilitate a, a remodel and addition on the rear of the home on Kusawati Drive, which is the east side of the property. Currently there is an existing deck. That deck will be demoed and in its place, new construction of an addition of a screened in porch. Um, and then some additional porch will be built um, on the north side of that addition. So the, the reduction required is nine and a quarter feet. Uh, which will reduce the rear yard to 30.75 feet. Staff has uh, asked that the application be viewed favorably and if approved further suggest the following conditions. Number one, the project is completed in substantial compliance with the submitted site plan documents dated received February 28, 2013, prepared by Paul Lee Consulting Engineering Associates, the plans themselves dated September 6, 2006. This approval is also not a blanket rear yard setback variance and only applies to the variance sought within the subject application. Okay. I'll uh, open up the floor. Some feel you'd like to speak? Sure. And I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. No, you got it. <coughs> and Nick, Kurt Sonnefeld, appreciate the board's time uh, and the staff's recommendation. Uh, yeah, my wife, as uh, Mr. Kuhn said, my wife and I are just simply looking to replace uh, our existing deck, uh, which is uh, warped uh, and uh, unfortunately exposed the elements and bugs and like that, uh, and replace it with a screen and porch consistent with porches with the rest of the neighborhood along that street. Um, you can see within the plan that the current deck is actually beyond the build line, uh, I guess still consistent with to have to have counties uh, uh, ordinances, or at least historically when it was built, uh, the uh, reasons to go beyond uh, the current deck line is to make the uh, screen and porch larger. You can see the little in the back of the house, the little square uh, uh, or rectangular area uh, in the middle of the house. That's our, our chimney. Chimney actually uh, is so sort of six feet beyond uh, the house. So in order to use a, a usable space. Uh, beyond that, uh, looking to extend the, uh, the, the porch uh, and, and therefore requesting the variance. We've spoken to our immediate neighbors, uh, both on, uh, along the street and in the, uh, the rear <coughs> yard, uh, and we did not receive any uh, immediate uh, objections. Thank you. Okay. All right. So would anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? All right. Would anyone uh, like to speak in opposition to the application? Easy now. All right, I'll uh, close the public portion and open it up for board discussion or a motion. My only question was when they, um, Mr. Sonnenfeld, when you have the screened in porch built, I, I noticed that the photo that we have here looks as if your neighbor has a screened in porch. Yes. Is yours going to extend a lot further in, in the depth of the backyard? From uh, the it'll extend by. Um, in terms of the lining up with that, uh, it would extend four uh, to six feet. The, the, the immediate neighbor, uh, actually both neighbors uh, uh, directly, so that way, do not have the, uh, the chimney issue. Uh, and so they have more usable space as they sort of walk out of their house. So your neighbor on the left on the drawing has a porch that's not shown on that drawing there? On, on this particular one, yes. And they don't have the outside fireplace, so they don't have the chimney that's in the way of their porch area. That's right. right. Okay. Yep. <coughs> have you spoken to your neighbors on either side? Are they? Yeah, uh, no objections. So they were fine with it, uh, including the, the folks uh, in, in the back. Okay. We're uh, requesting the variance. 
Thank you. And, and one, one last question. Uh, this is going to be, there was some discussion in our work group meeting earlier. This is not going to be conditioned space. This is screen porch that you're looking to build there? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Any other discussion from the board? Or motions? I move to approve. Okay. All right. So the motion, as I understand it, is to approve ZBA case 13-044 um, with the recommendations, uh, the staff recommendations outlined in our agenda. Which I moved. Okay, so with the, with the conditions outlined in the staff report. So all in favor of the approval of the uh, variance, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. The motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on. Case ZBA 13-045, Robert Barbieri, representing the Strode Group, LLC, owners seek the following. A variance to 27-146D to decrease the minimum required side yard of an R100 lot from 10 feet to 2.3 feet at a property located at 2688 Osborne Road. Uh, if we could get a summary of the staff report. This request is made to demolish an existing carport and reestablish in its place a um, garage and a second floor addition on the left side of the home that's located at 2688 Osborne Road. It's an R100 lot which would ordinarily have a 10 foot side yard setback. In this case they're asking for a 2.3 foot side yard setback. The existing condition today uh, substantially matches that setback with the existing construction on the side of the home. So the land use won't change nor should the nonconformity expand very much as a function of the new construction. Um, staff has recommended that the application be uh, looked upon favorably and further suggest the following conditions. Number one, development of the lot shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department, which is attached to this report. The survey itself prepared by Survey Land Express Incorporated, dated January 24, 2013. The granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home addition depicted in the attached development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to any all future construction on the property. Okay. Uh, Howard, so tell us again what's the what is going to be the remaining unused setback there? I mean it's a reduction to two point Yeah, it will it, the, the the district standard is ten feet and they want to go down to two point three feet, which is uh, each tenth of a foot is one point two inches. 27 inches or so. Um, like 3.6 inches. Two, two foot three. Yeah. Two but that three is inches. currently what they currently have with their garage, correct? With the with the carport, it's rough. It's roughly the same. Yes. Okay. So not asking for any more than what correct. They have the, right the, now. The, the land use and the, the bulk of the building will essentially remain the same following the new construction if approved okay. as the as the existing condition today. There's some photographs that are in your packet. And the, the site plan, a little blurry, but somewhat indicates what exactly is going on. Okay. All right. Mr. Barrier, if you'd like to Yeah, thanks for your consideration. Uh, my name is Robert Barbieri with the uh, Stroke Group. And uh, the intent of the, of the project is to uh, add a second story to the home. Um, back some 20 years ago, prior to when we purchased it in November, uh, the garage that you'll see in, the, in your packet was uh, added to the home and is, is a non-conforming structure. It's a good eight feet beyond the line. Um, so we're not looking for anything additional. We're just actually looking to go straight up. Um, the, what's not depicted on the diagram uh, is that we're looking to bring uh, the addition of the garage forward. So this is the existing garage. Uh, we're looking to bring it just forward to match the house. There'll be an addition of about 1,500 square feet. Um, we did look at some uh, alternative designs, and uh, when we looked at those designs, um, 
it was going to basically cause us to demolish the house, which is not really the intent of the company that I own. We really like to just refurbish houses. We like to keep, especially a 1940s home, really don't want to take it down. So um, to avoid a lot of unnecessary land disturbances, a lot of very large heritage trees on the property that would be, um, that could potentially have some root damage. So the best possible solution for this renovation would be just to add the garage to it and go straight up. We did look at some rear yard um, options as well, but because of the heritage trees, uh, again, we decided not to do that. Uh, I did contact the neighbors to the left, to the left side of the property or the east side. Um, it is a uh, townhome project. I contacted the president of the association and he and the board went over the uh, diagrams for the improvement and they had no objection to it. Um, I got a letter, or I should say an email from the right neighbor uh, approving it as well. Would you like a copy of that? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for you? Mm -hmm. uh, not, not at this time, I don't think. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of the application? All right. Is there anyone who is, would like to speak in opposition to the application? Okay. Go ahead and close the public comment section and open it up for board discussion or motion. I propose we uh, adopt the board recommendation and have a snack recommendation approve the marriage. Okay. Second. Second. All right. So the motion, as I understand it, is to approve uh, ZBA 13 045. Uh, and a minute with the staff, uh, the two staff recommendations in the staff report. Uh, all those in favor of the approval, uh, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? And the motion passes unanimously. All The next item on the agenda is ZBA 13-046. Uh, Reiner Reitig, representing HSC Intown LLC, is <coughs> located at 6650 Sugarloaf Parkway, Suite 200, Duluth, Georgia, seeks the following. A variance to 27-788A to allow for an average required front yard reduction of 8.06 feet from 45.56 feet to 37.5 feet at a property located at 2684 North Thompson Road. Uh, can we get a summary of the staff report? Certainly, this is the first of two variances on tonight's agenda related to this property. Um, this first one is for a reduction in an average front yard setback. The average front yard setback um, for this property is 45.56 feet, even though the district standard uh, is 35 feet. The applicant would like to reduce that, not to the district standard, but to 37.5 feet to fit a proposed home on the lot, as indicated on the site plan that was submitted in the application materials. Um, staff recommends the board view the application favorably, and if the application is approved tonight, we further suggest the following condition. Development of the lot shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department, which is attached to this report, prepared by bh and Engineering Incorporated, dated November 12, 2012. The granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home depicted in the attached <coughs> development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to ending all future construction on the property. All right, we'll go ahead and uh Open up the floor for uh, comments in favor of the application. If the applicant would like to come forward, please. Uh, 
<clears throat> my name's Mike Phelps. Um, I'm the owner of the property. Reiner had some family situation come up, so I relieved him of it this evening. Okay. Um, it's pretty much just like it's drawn. We're, we're requesting a variance on the front. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd shaped lot, um, and the house plan that we have proposed for it would not quite fit and we're trying to stay in consistence with the back of the other house that's to the south right now. But we were having to pull the house forward because of the topo in the backyard and because of the pinch down on that right side of the property line. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Would anyone like to speak in opposition to the application? Please come forward. Hi, I'm Jerry Mills. Uh, my home's about a thousand feet from this house on Balvenier Drive, just around the corner. Um, and I uh, absolutely do not think this meets your criteria in terms of a hardship. This property uh, is not particularly irregularly shaped as was represented to you a moment ago. I'm very familiar with I've lived in this neighborhood for over 30 years. Um, this is a basically a standard lot. Uh, the developers have bought it, bulldozed the property, and now come and ask uh, for a zoning waiver. Uh, there's no hardship here. Uh, the, the zoning requirements were in place when this property was purchased. Uh, it's, it's not as if the homeowner is trying to stretch a porch or anything else. And I respectfully ask that you deny this approval. Does not, absolutely does not meet your criteria. If there's a hardship, it exists on Sugarloaf, not in Blue Cape. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? Hi, my, I'm Kelly Parker, my wife Jennifer, a homeowner, We're, but we own the house in the south. Um, I'm, I'm objecting um, a number of different reasons. If you notice on the house, on the my garage, which would be the house, would be the, down here on the bottom, this garage comes back 10 feet from the front of this house. So I have a number of pictures that show that when you slide the neighbor house another t eight feet closer to the street, it substantially changes the way that my lot looks. Now I'm not going to tell you that my house isn't big. It is, and it does look funny on that lot. I know that, but I want to show you a couple of pictures. This is the lot we're talking about. It's substantially smaller. Mine, mine's number 19, number 20 is the one we're talking about. So it's half. It's quite a bit short. 19 is mine, 20 is there. I also want to show you a picture from my garage. If you notice my garage being back 10 feet, there is a, there is a tree that I will show you in another picture. It's on my lot. That tree is where the edge of their house is. My garage is ten. My garage is ten feet back from the setback. So if you go ten feet up, yes, sir, and then go another eight feet up, it's almost to the edge of that tree. So it's a substantial chunk that I would be looking at of that house. My house is the, the big one on the top, but they are all in line. So I'm not going to tell you that my house isn't going to look funny already. It does stick out. But if you have another house on top of the hill, my house isn't even on top of that hill. My house is the big one there. If you stick another house on the top of that hill, I want to show you in the next picture what that street will look like. My house will be wiped out from view coming the other direction. You wouldn't see my house coming from the north. 
which keeps me coming from point toward point south. All of that view would be gone. And I showed you my picture of my house, it's pretty good. This is coming the other direction. There's that tree. Yeah, this house, this lot is higher than mine, and my house is up in the air. Um, I, I respect development. I love the fact that they are putting a new house next to mine. That's great for me, but I do think it's going a little bit too far forward than it needs to be, and I just would respectfully ask that you deny it. Thank you. Okay. I, excuse me, while you're there, mm -hmm. well, what's the backyard of yours? Uh, I was going to save the backyard discussion for the next item, but the backyard does, my backyard goes back substantially farther than theirs. Excuse me. This is where their lot ends. Mine goes back another, oh, probably back here. Okay. But I, I, he had indicated the drop saw, and I don't want to get the two confused, but they are related. Oh, uh, well, the, um, this, this lot is the Velvedere lot. This, this lot is for this house on Felvedere. My lot goes back. I understand that, but does it, no, there's, elevation there's, wise, does it go down? There's a, a little creek bit. back there. The creek, creek is way back over here. It goes back a little way. It, it, it goes a little bit in this lot. My lot, not really either. Really, the drop off happens past both of our property lines. Okay. Anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? All right. Would you like to speak? I think you've got uh, nine, nine minutes left. Yeah, let me, I'm going to show one thing to make sure that you realize that I know we're still going to be sitting back a little bit further than what his home is, but the eight foot variance is mostly garage here. This portion of the house sits back another two to three foot beyond the garage. So the 37.88 feet is to the front of the garage, which we put to the left side, the high side of the lot, to try to get the front offsets on the house as it steps back. And this is covered porch right here. So this would be the closest. And I would be saying that this is from this point, from this point, yes, sorry, from this point to the street is a little over 40 feet. So the 37 foot is to the front edge of the garage. Okay. Um, you have another point you want to make? Do we have any time left in the opposition? They have about a minute. Okay. A minute's great. Right. Um, I don't really care if it's a garage or a chicken house on the front. Uh, Ashford Park has been continually eroded over the last few years. I've owned a home there since 1976, uh, and I would oppose any development uh, that violates the front setbacks in this neighborhood. It is ugly, uh, destroys property of the existing homeowners. And I'd say I don't really care if it's a garage or a, or a gazebo, I would be opposed to it. Okay. All right. Seems how we have no more comments, I will uh, go ahead and close the public portion of this case and open it up to the board for discussion or motion. The average, what are we looking at in the uh, I believe the average here is 45.56 uh, and they want to reduce it down to 37.5. The uh, the underlying zoning would require a 35 foot setback, but the uh, the averaging overrides that in this in this area. Okay, thank you. A question for the owner: Is it uh, if we considered more setback relief in the rear, uh, could you push it back? A little bit more. Uh, do the same. The same product. Yes, sir. Yes, that's a yes. Yes, sir. It, at that point, though, I believe we're looking at a side yard setback as well. Um, okay. Because. 
because you think that. Well, the dotted lines, isn't that the, uh, the perimeter of sort of the buildable area? Is that my, my understanding? That, so, that is correct. Yeah. The, so the 40 foot rear building line you can see so there. Jeff, that's why. And then the, uh, the 45 foot line you can see goes into the garage. Yeah. These are very modest setback relief requests compared to some of the ones we hear. I think that uh, my, my personal opinion is the, the shape of the lot being irregular um, does does create a, a hardship in this in this case because the buildable area of the property is is diminished by the fact that the rear property line is is much smaller than the front property line so the lot does choke down as it gets further back. Do I hear a motion? We're talking about inches here. The, the question to the applicant about moving it back a little bit, you know, reducing the front setback uh, variance uh, a little bit and increasing the back a little bit sounds like it would be less objectionable. Would that be something you might I, 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 I hesitate to mess with your procedure, but it, the front is, is the big issue for me. So it, it depends on what your, what your vote is for the front. I would be much more willing to talk about the back, but if we're going to just prove the front, then there's really no sense to talk about the back. Because the front is what concerns me. There is a great deal of space in the back that we can go back more. And I've got pictures for that, too. We can talk about that in a minute. Howard has a, is there a way to amend? I agree. I agree. I agree. It's the front. I, I don't want to disturb the, the view. I don't want to disturb our neighborhood, and this would be ugly. But if you want to move it back, I don't know problem whatsoever. The ordinance does permit you to grant less than the request than what's made, but you cannot grant more than a request that's made. So we in this can't instance, increase the, the rear yard setback that's coming up in the next so issue. Currently, the, the next agenda item is for a five yard rear yard setback. You are not entitled to grant eight feet to the but rear yard. But we could defer that one. Well, it, it, would, it would have to be properly advertised. So it would have to be a reapplication for them to do If you were to withdraw the rear yard request without prejudice and then reapply with the increased rear yard, and I think it's right, if he's going to try and set that house on that lot, um, he's, he's, he's at the pinch point in the rear where the width of that home to fit inside the side yard setbacks, it's, it's as far to the west as it can go currently without encroaching both the rear and the sides. Currently, it's only encroaching the rear. So yeah, it's, have it, to it might be a wholly the, different request. You'd have to miter the corner of the house or <laughs> yeah. something like that. you have to work that out. Yeah. Yeah. There have been, I, I, I don't want to mess with the procedure, there have been other houses with, with a corner lot where they've combined lots together and built three houses on an on a adjacent uh, lot about a block away. That seemed to work pretty well. And I can show you the picture of how these three lots that are sitting there, and they're all older homes and they're irregular, you're right. But there is a way to work around it. That's when you try to put one lot without consideration of the ones around it, it gets difficult, I agree with you. But it has been done in Ashford Park, and the front setback has been respected. Does anybody else on the board have a feeling that maybe we do a little compromise zoning here and we grant a, a, a reduced front setback? I'm inclined to agree. I don't think that's going to solve anything. Yeah, I, I'd be inclined, Jim, with all due respect, I, I'd be inclined to ask them to try to talk amongst themselves and see if they can't come up with something. I would be inclined to, to ask them to go back and and see if there's not some agreement that you two can reach um, before we kind of vote and put some sort of constraint on them that it may turn out that he's not prepared to abide by. Um, 
Essentially, you're looking at a two-month probably deferral to if he wanted to pull and reapply, you know, by pushing the house that, back. That wouldn't be a hardship on me, but I'm confused why it's 60 days Mr. Chairman, too much for the group. It's a technical problem that the second application can't, we can't. I understand, I understand that. Point of order, please. Um, I apologize, I'm sorry. The, uh, so there is no provision for an amendment to an application? Not to amend it for a greater request than what was made. You can amend something to a lesser request than what was made. Okay. Mr. Chairman, what was the comment that you were going to make that you didn't think that if we gave um, the relief on the front, you said that the one I'm saying we're not going to be able to make any resolution to this uh, because we can back. we can reduce the front, but we can't do anything with the rear. We can't afford more relief in the rear than what's been requested. Right. Without them reporting. This, this house has not been started or anything, has it? No. Is the property under contract? Or is the property under contract? Is there a contingency on zoning? Or? Uh, I, have, I have a potential buyer, oh, I but I wasn't going to sign anything until we got to this. I'm sure. He's asking for a couple, 60 days. Is that going to be a problem for you? I, you might not get your zoning. But well, see. I, I, let me let me try to explain just a little more detail. One of the reasons we held off because um, we attempted to apply for a, a, a variance in DeKalb County, but we definitely wanted to deal with Brookhaven. Um, and and that's one of the reasons we did do the five, basically the five in the rear, eight in the front because we knew we were going to get pinched on that sideline. And instead of trying to get two variances before it was over with, we are going to end up trying to get three variances. So we took what we thought was the lesser of the three evils. And yes, this is the proposed home for the buyer. This is the same particular home I've built in the Ashford Park area four times now, scattered throughout the area. And um, I mean, if. At this point, and I'm not trying to be adamant, if we're going to reduce the front setback or, or reduce what I'm asking for, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing table anyway and sit down and rework a new plan. So it's, it's either this and, and then or whatever y'all decide that we can have. Did, does the existing neighbor or, or the existing house, did, do they have an opinion about your plan? They're not here. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm, I'm not going to really say on that. We talked to them. They, they've approached us about buying that property and I, I, was, see. I was just going to hold off until we got this one resolved. I understand. Okay. All right. Any, uh, any more discussion on the board or someone would like to present a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that we deny the request uh, based on that a couple different, uh, well, for a di couple different reasons. One, uh, Mr. Phelps, is it? Yes. The, the comment you just made that the, the property owners just to the north have approached you about buying their property is somewhat intriguing to me and goes to Mr. Parker's comment that if you do have multiple lots and you could look at a combination of those lots and work out that, that side variance, seems to me you could solve your own issue there with the side, side lot variance. Yeah, by changing the property line you mean? Correct. By, by buying another yeah, no. Well, he's already <laughs> talking about it. If, if, if you're already talking about it, and if you're going to say, no, we're not going to do that, let's, you know. But I was already inclined to, to move to deny it, solely based on, I don't think you truly have a hardship other than to build that particular home. I understand you built four of those homes. You could build another home on that lot. Oh yeah, I can build a much smaller house. Or a differently shaped house. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a second to uh, Mr. Self's motion? I do not hear a second. Do I hear any other motions? I'm going to make a motion um, 
that we exact we split the baby and instead of giving the eight foot variance we give a four foot variance on this one and then we consider the subsequent motion on the back end i'll okay. second that all right all right so the motion as i understand it is to uh, reduce the uh, variance to four feet that we would be granting uh, i'll go ahead and open up the floor on the board for discussion like that I don't have any comments or discussion about reducing that front variance. Yeah, I guess I go back to our earlier comment, Mr. Chairman. What does that solve? Um, Mr. Phelps has already said he will have to go back to the drawing board in that situation. Um, I don't know if that helps the, the opposition at all to reduce it by four feet, but if, if the applicant already has to go back to the drawing board, I don't see the benefit. Any other discussion? One benefit is it's just a it becomes a design issue. <coughs> well, my question is for the folks who are opposed. How would you feel about that? I, I, I want to save the rear discussions for when we're talking about that zoning, but I, I and I, I understand your point about the difference in, in the back, but really there is a there is a way to make that work with that with and still respect the front of my property and respect the front of number of properties. Are you agreeable to a four foot? I, I don't mean disrespect to the builder. I just don't. I, I, it's still my side of that house I'm going to be looking at more than four feet. I'm going to be looking at a great deal of house on the north side of my property. And yeah, four feet doesn't, doesn't make enough of a difference for me. No disrespect. Thank you. I'll go back to the same comment that I made earlier um, that you know part of part of what we're tasked to do is to grant variances based on based on conditions um, and I, I think that due to the shape of the irregular shape of the lot that there does need to be um, some sort of exception made for this and if uh, you know if the rest of the board feels like four feet is adequate then um, but I, I just think that there, there needs to be some sort of compromise on this because there, there is a, a hardship on this property, in my opinion, the way that I read what we're tasked to do. I, I agree. I think there's a hardship. Um, my, my only concern about supporting the motion, I, I don't know whether four feet works for you. I don't know. And it doesn't work for you. And so if we're going to take a vote on something that we know doesn't work for one and might work for the other. I don't know that we've really done anything. I'd almost prefer for us to punt on it, and I don't like using that expression, give you some time, and um, with, with an understanding that some of us feel that there's a hardship here that this gentleman's got, and that um, I, for one, would be inclined to provide him with relief on the back end, even though we're not discussing that, if that is a way for us to kind of facilitate his development and the, um, the changes in the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Go ahead. At this point, um, with the time that we've uh, been working on this deal, I'm willing, I'm willing to take the four feet if we okay. work out the back situation. We'll, we'll, we'll make something work with that boundary. I'll have to do it modification to this house slightly but you're talking about you know a four foot modification on the garage side basically mm -hmm. so but i don't think that we'll be able to give you what you need tonight i think is the problem with regards to the relief on the back side because we can't give any no i'm saying the way the back is now that what we're requesting on the back yes sir if that if that were granted you could live with the four feet yes sir but I don't know that that solves the, I, that I, I don't solve mean disrespect. I would be more willing to give more, and four more feet to back. To be, and I don't mean that. Right, point, your point, of order, point of order. Point of order. Sorry. All right. All right. Any more discussion about the motion on the floor, which is to grant uh, a four foot reduction in the front setback variance? All right. Hearing no other discussion, I will. Uh, I will call for a vote. The, the motion as I understand it is to grant a 
reduction in the front setback of four feet in the average required front yard setback, four feet. Um, 41.5, to 40, is that right? To 41.33.5. What's that? No, 41.5. From 45.56 to 37.5, therefore 33.5. No, that's the other direction. Right the other direction. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So the, the new, the front yard, the new front yard setback that the motion is proposing is 41.56 feet uh, from the front property line. All right. All right. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right. The motion passes uh, six to one. All right. Moving on. Case. ZBA 13-047. Um, how about we just say Mr. Phelps here, representing HSC in town LLC, owners located at 6650 Sugarloaf Parkway, Suite 200, Duluth, Georgia, seeks the following a variance to 27-186E to allow for a required rear yard reduction of five feet from 40 feet to 35 feet at a property located at 2684 North Thompson Road. Let me get a summary of the staff recommendation. This is the request related to the same property as the previous case. This request is for the rear yard. The district standard is a 40 foot rear yard in the R75 zoning district. The request is to reduce that by five feet to 35 feet for the rear yard um, to be able to place the home that was drawn on the submitted site plan on the subject lot. Um, staff has requested that the, the board view the application favorably. And if you were to approve the request, we further suggest the following condition. Development of the lot shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the community development department attached to this report. And number two, the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of a proposed new home depicted in the attached development plan, not to be considered a blanket rear yard variance to any and all future construction on the property. Okay. Uh, Mr. Phelps, anything you'd like to add for your next case? Uh, I, as you can see, it's the back right corner. Um, it's a very small piece, even though we're just asking for a straight across, but we didn't want to try to draw in an angle there. Um, I think the picture represents everything that we're trying to do right there. Um, other than that, I can answer any questions. Okay. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of the application? Anyone would like to speak in opposition to the application? Please, just a short one. All right. I picture the back here. It, it, um, I remind you that the lot is smaller than, we are talking about number 20, <coughs> number 19. It is going to change the way that whole property fits. The backyard is, does not have a slope. There is no hardship as far as that's my backyard. You can see it's relatively level next door on the other side of the fence would be his property. <coughs> There's the back of my house. So he has plenty of room to come back. That tree is approximately where the property line would be. There is potentially in the backyard. You can go back farther, but I know we're not talking about that. I am disappointed that we couldn't delay motion, but too late for that. I'd respect the procedure by talking about backyard at the time. There's a proper property line. Lots of stuff. I see the, the first map. Number 19, I think. 20. Is your home in the basement? Yes, it is. Okay. And do you have a rear daylight basement? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And you can see. So it does, but it, it does slope to the back. It, but it does, it slopes the other direction. My, my fence is relatively straight going back. Okay. His. Right. I was just looking at it from the 3D view. That's the back of your house, right? Yes. Yeah. So it is <coughs> sloping back that direction. Yeah. Okay. It's not. Okay. It's okay. Right. Now it didn't look like a huge drop off. 
All right, anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? All right, I'll go ahead and close the public comment and open it up to the board for discussion. I'm just going to go ahead and make a motion to approve this application as stated with the Howard Kuntz uh, my, uh, adjustments at the back of the staff report. I second. Okay. All right, the motion on the floor is to approve uh, ZBA 13-047. Any discussion amongst the board? Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Phelps. It's my understanding that the one of the conditions, I believe the second condition in the staff's recommendation is the um, the home depicted here is what would have to be built. Can that home be built with only a four foot variance on the front end if we if we were to grant the five foot variance on the back end? Can that actual home be built on that? Less the garage four foot. So no, that that actual footprint that you see right there is our floor plan for this house. But no, based on that, I've got to rework the front garage four foot back. But other than that, um, it's going to end up recessing. Let me show you. I have this plan drawn. This plan has two different options. You have a two car, and then you have a tandem three car garage here. So what we're probably going to do is reworking this part of the house right here so that we have a deep garage here and a shorter, shallower one on this side. Well, I think it's fair to say then that I'd like to modify my motion to not be so restrictive on the site plan condition to allow him to make such modifications as will be consistent with the first variance that we modify. Okay. All right, any other discussion uh, about the motion on the floor? All right. So the motion on the floor is to approve ZBA 13-047 based on the uh, staff recommendations outlined in our report, uh, but also with the knowledge that there will have to be some modifications to the, the plan shown uh, in order to rework the garage for the front, front set back there. All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have you all had a chance to meet? Okay. Um, I guess let's uh, let's go back to case ZBA 13-042, uh, Sean Cash. Um, Mr. Cash, if you'd like to speak for a second. Yes, um, we, we did discuss the uh, project and we'd like to respectfully request a deferral until we can further discuss this and, um, when, when, the, when the property owner gets back from the bottom, we'd like to speak directly with him and okay. get, get it worked out. Okay. All right. I move to defer. I'll second. All right. The motion on the floor, as I understand it, is to defer. ZBA 13-042 for uh, till our next regularly scheduled meeting, which would be May 15th. Um, Wednesday, May the 15th. Okay. So Wednesday, May the 15th. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passed. Thank you very much. Uh, two minute recess, please. All right. We'll take a two minute recess so uh, Mr. Beardley can appease himself properly. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get the meeting started back. The next item on the agenda is ZBA 13-048, Michael Phelps representing Epps Heritage Investments, LLC, 
Owners located at 637 Woods Drive, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Seeks the following. A variance to 26-168 to allow for a reduction in required lot area, a reduction of required lot width, a reduction of required front yard adjacent to a street, a reduction of required side yard adjacent to a street, a reduction of required rear yard, a reduction of a required interior side yard, and an exemption from the provision for additional lot width for a corner lot found at 14-257 at 1258 Windsor Parkway. If we could get a summary of the staff report. Sure, this is the first case um, of four that are all interrelated. On tonight's agenda, it's items E8 through E11, and they all relate to the same four properties that are bounded by Windsor Parkway, Cates Avenue, and Antioch Drive. Currently, there are four lots um, that are encompassed by those three streets. The applicant has come forward with a proposal to realign the lot lines to create four differently shaped lots for the purpose of uh, constructing four new single family homes commiserate with the site plan <coughs> that you got in your packets. Um, the, the first item relates to um, 1258 Windsor Parkway and it is to reduce uh, excuse me, it's a, it's a variance to a number of development standards to allow the idea of the uh, home that they have proposed for the lot to be constructed um, on the substandard lot located in this R75 zoning district. Uh, the staff has done an exhaustive analysis of this project and our recommendation to the board is to view this, appli this application and the subsequent applications actually favorably. And if it were to be approved, we would further suggest the following conditions. Number one, development of the required subdivision plat and subsequent building plans shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department, dated received April 5th, 2013, attached to this report. It's prepared by Land Development Surveyors Incorporated. And the date on the plan is actually February 27th, 2013. <clears throat> Number two, the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home subdivision project depicted on the attached development plans is not to be considered a blanket variance to any and all future construction on the properties. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and open the uh, public comment section of the meeting and if the applicant would like to speak first, please go ahead. Um, I'm Michael Phelps, I'm representing Epps Heritage Investment Group. Um, I have the property currently under contract uh, pending getting these variances. Um, if you look at, I don't know if you have a copy of the original lot layout um, that we were originally working with, but um, they were all originally non-conforming R75 lots. Um, none of them met the square footage, the width, or the, um, for the, uh, they met the depth, the, the square footage the width. Um, and then lots <coughs> one and three on the original plat were unbuildable due to the fact that the side yards on them, um, took up the whole 40 foot, you got a 20, I think it was a 25 foot side yard set back off the road, which took out slot one and three, which gave you five foot to build a house on. So we went back to the drawing board and um, we re-laid the lots out to try to maximize our, um, well, to maximize getting them close to conforming, conforming our 75 lots so we could. Um, putting the two front lots that are facing uh, Windsor Parkway at 73 foot wide, and our proposal was to do side entry values off the two side streets to keep three houses originally front loading on the Windsor Parkway, keep the traffic down. And then um, our lots three and four, we made those, um, we faced those the same way as every other house along um, Cates Avenue, it's currently there. And those are all, um, we originally had them flipped the other way, flipped them the same way as every other house on there to try to conform with the neighbors that are um, down the street. And then um, to try to also get the maximum uh, lot coverage we could, we had to, on lots one and two, we had to um, hit the setbacks from 30 feet building lines to um, 20 foot building lines to try to get a maximum width out of these lots. And um, I think it's pretty uh, self-explanatory where we've gone from the original layout. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. All right, is there anyone uh, else that would like to speak in favor of the application? All right. Yes. 
Would anyone like to speak in opposition to the application? No, in favor. Oh, I'm in sorry. Favor. In favor? No, sure. If you have to speak in favor, please. Well, I have much to say, but I... Please give us your name first. Okay. I don't have much to say, but uh, I'm in favor of what they're trying to do. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? All right. But is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition of the application? Seeing as how we have no uh, no one else who wants to speak on the application, I'll close the public comment and open it up to the board for discussion or entertain a motion. Uh, I'll start the discussion. Um, while this seems like a, a large number of variances, um, I think that we're basically taking four parcels and just configuring them in different ways. We're not adding another parcel to the, um, to the equation here. It's not a matter of someone with you know, three lots trying to get four out of it. I think we've got four parcels here and what we would end up with are, are four parcels that would, uh, I think, be more attractive and fit in with the neighborhood a little bit better, in my opinion. My only comment, Mr. Chairman, is what we discussed earlier, which is that, um, I know this is a transforming neighborhood. It's literally in my backyard. And um, what I know that's going to be a concern to the constituency is adding more homes in our area and increasing the traffic load on Windsor Parkway. But to your point, we are not increasing the density should this be approved because it's already zoned for four partials. And I think that, um, you know, it would probably make more sense, even though there are a large number of variances, to consider those as opposed to trying to rezone this area, which I think could be potentially detrimental to the neighborhood many years down the road. Okay. Any other board discussion? Mr. Phelps, the, I believe you indicated the original plan called for a side entry garage. Is yeah. that these these two lots one and two are both going to be side entry garages coming off of um, Cates okay. and Antioch. So it's not a change to a plan. That no, is that's current that's plan. that's the current okay. plan that we're doing. Okay. Um, one one question for staff here: Is this uh, this particular one of the four that we're hearing? Is this tied to one of these particular lot two? Lot two. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. All right, any other discussion or I'll entertain a motion. My only other question was with regard to the trees. There's a large number of trees in those plots. I think about, at least I think I counted maybe 40. Yeah, so um, what we've done with DeKalb County and um, I guess with the city of Brookhaven, uh, I guess certain trees are, um, are uh, trees that have to be replaced with tree banking or whatnot. So when I guess when we get into it, submitting our plans and deciding what trees have to come out, I guess that's when we decide, we all decide how, what, how many we have to bank and get back or plant back on the property. Um, I know there's going to be uh, quite a few, I think there's a lot of pine trees on the lot, um, but I, it's not over a certain diameter, I think, so I consider it a specimen tree. So um, that would just be when we, whenever we submit our plans and start building, y'all can, I guess, we all decide how many, how many we need to plant or what we need to do and what we can't take out. So. I think those will be addressed in the individual building permit. Mr. Epps, I'll have to tell you that um, I enjoy the Christmas lights that are wrapped around some of those trees. So look at this, I'll miss those. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, would anybody like to uh, make a motion? Make a motion, do pass. Okay. All right, so as I understand, the motion is to grant the variances requested in ZBA 13-048, 
uh, based upon the staff rec the two staff recommendations included in our report. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. aye. All those opposed? All right, the motion passes unanimously. Moving on, ZBA 13-049, Michael Phelps representing Epps Heritage Investments LLC, owners located at 637 Woods Drive Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia 30318, seeks the following. A variance to 27-186 to allow for a reduction in required lot area, a reduction of required lot width, a reduction of a required front yard adjacent to a street, a reduction of a required rear yard, and a reduction of a required interior side yard at 1254 Windsor Parkway. Uh, can you get a brief summary of the staff report? You can. This uh, second of four items related to the same project actually relates to lot three, which will front on Cates Avenue. And um, the variances requested are to complete the project as it is uh, as it is drawn on the site plan that's been submitted. Um, this is the, the second of four lots on the project, which currently consists of four lots. Um, the staff has <coughs> excuse me. The staff has recommended that you view the application favorably, and further suggest the following conditions. Um, development of the required subdivision plat and the subsequent building plans shall occur in, in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department. Receive April 5th, 2013, attached to this report, prepared by Land Development Surveyors Incorporated, dated February 27th, 2013. Condition two is lot three, which is this lot in question, shall be required to include a 10-foot no-access easement along the Antioch Road property frontage to preclude, excuse me, preclude a through lot, that's all here which is prohibited by code, the required no access easement shall be included on the recorded subdivision plat. Number three, the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home subdivision project depicted in the attached development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to any and all future construction on the property. All right, I will open it up for public comment. Anyone like to speak in favor of the application? Uh, I'm just going to explain the no access easement that we had to uh, go through with. Um, for, that no access easement is going to go through the backs of lots three and four, and it's just um, there's no uh, there's no room for allowing a lot to run street to street, so we had to input the no access easement to keep it from being a complete <coughs> through lot. Although um, some of the lots on the street were, I think they were already pre um, previous. Uh, site plan in that way, so um, that's just the only thing that I had to comment on those two lots. Okay. Anyone else to speak in favor of the application? You still for this one, Mr. Epps? Okay. All right. <laughs> Anyone like to speak in opposition to the application? All right. We'll close the public comment, open it up to the board for discussion. For a motion. I move to approve. All right. Second. Very second. All right, so the motion on the floor is the approval of ZBA 13-049 uh, with the three recommendations of staff attached to that. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, uh, please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next item, ZBA 13-04A, Michael Phelps, representing Epps Heritage Investments, LLC, owners located at 637 Woods Drive, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, seeks the following. A variance to 27-186 to allow for a reduction in required lot area, a reduction of required lot width, a reduction of a required front yard adjacent to a street, a reduction of a required side yard adjacent to a street, a reduction of a required rear yard, a reduction of a required interior side yard, and an exemption from the provision for additional lot width for a corner lot found in 14-257 at 1250 Windsor Parkway. Brief summary of the staff report. Thank you. This is the third of four requests to complete the project. Uh, you have a host of variances required to complete um, lot one actually refers to the lot that's in the southwest corner of the development property. Um, the variances required are for setbacks, 
Um, and, and also, as it's a corner lot, the code requires you have an extra 15 feet of width uh, for future right-of-way improvements if they're required. So in this instance, that would be very, the staff has recommended that the application be viewed favorably. We further suggest the following conditions. Number one, development of the required subdivision plat and subsequent building plans shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department, dated received April 5th, 2013, attached to this report. Prepared by Land Devel Development Surveyors Incorporated, dated February 27th, 2013. Number two, the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home subdivision project depicted in the attached development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to any and all future construction on the property. All right, I'll open up public comment. Anyone like to speak in favor of the application? Anyone like to speak in opposition to the application? All right, I will close the public comment section, open it up to the board for discussion or a motion. Motion for due pass. Mm -hmm. I'll second. All right, the motion's been seconded. Uh, this is for approval of ZBA item 13-04A uh, to approve the variance with the conditions in the staff report, uh, the two recommendations in the report. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Last item, ZBA 13-04B. Michael Phelps representing Epps Heritage Investments, LLC. Owners located at 637 Woods Drive, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Seeks the following. A variance to 27-186 to allow for a reduction in required lot area a reduction of required lot width, a reduction of a required front yard adjacent to a street, and a reduction of a required interior side yard at 3178 Cates Avenue. A summary of the staff report. The last of four requests, um, this is actually related to lot four, the northernmost lot uh, for the project. Uh, the variances requested are to complete the project as is indicated on that site plan to place the home footprint as you see it on lot four, uh, it will take access from Cates Avenue. It should be required to have a 10 foot no access easement uh, that fronts Antioch Drive to pre preclude the idea that it be treated as a through lot. Staff has recommended uh, the application be viewed favorably with the following three conditions if it were to be approved by the board. Number one, development of the required subdivision plan and subsequent plans, subsequent building plans shall occur in substantial accordance with the site plan submitted to the Community Development Department dated received April 5th, 2013, attached to this report, prepared by Land Development Surveyors Incorporated, dated February 27th, 2013. Lot four, which is the lot in question, shall be required to include a 10-foot no access easement along the Antioch Road property frontage to preclude a through lot, which is prohibited by code. The required no access easement shall be included on the recorded subdivision plat. Number three, the granting of this variance is to accomplish the completion of the proposed new home subdivision project depicted in the attached development plans and is not to be considered a blanket variance to any and all future construction on the property. All right, we'll open it up for public comment. Anyone would like to speak in favor of the application? Anyone would like to speak in opposition to the application? Close the public comment for board discussion or entertain a motion. I move to pass. Second. All right. The motion is for approval of ZBA 13-04B, uh, the approval of the variance based upon the three recommendations contained in the staff report. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. All right. Is our last item um, and the uh, our last business item of the evening is uh, public comment if anyone has anything that they would like to say to address the yeah. I'm reading off an old agenda okay. no problem. it's meetings adjourned <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.